As excited as we can get over shiny new computer parts, the vast majority of them inevitably get to a point where they're woefully out of date. But before you chuck your old parts or even your entire old rig into an e-waste pile, we want to give you some surprisingly useful ways to keep using that old hardware. If you're having issues with your off-the-shelf router, you can actually turn your old PC into a router instead. You see, drop connections and other router problems are often caused by the underpowered hardware inside getting overwhelmed. But the good news is that even a relatively slow PC from a decade ago can run circles around the typical store-bought router in terms of performance. We actually have a whole video that goes into more detail on how to do this, but it's mostly a matter of installing a network card and one of several free operating systems that handle traffic routing and firewall duties. It does take a little bit more work to configure properly than a consumer grade router, but once you do, you'll have a powerful, customizable setup that is far less likely to crash at inopportune times. Another good idea is to just breathe some life into that older system so that it can still accomplish basic tasks. The culprits behind the slow performance of older systems, say from the last 15 years or so, tend to be either a reliance on old mechanical hard drives or insufficient RAM. The good news is that SSDs with modest capacities are quite cheap, and it's still also possible to get older kinds of RAM, such as DDR3, for not a whole lot of money either, meaning it might be preferable to just upgrade your old PC instead of shelling out for a whole new one if you just need something responsive enough for web browsing, productivity, and video calls. And even though there's been some consternation over Windows 11 system requirements, some of them are easy enough to bypass if you want a current OS on older hardware. And failing that, you could always try Chrome OS Flex, which is free and designed to run easily on older computers. But what if you have an old graphics card laying around? We'll tell you what to do with that right after we thank iFixit. They offer comprehensive guides, replacement parts, and high quality tools, all to help you fix your broken electronics. And for 48 hours after the release of this video, you can save $10 on orders of $50 or more. This might be a great time to pick up a high quality driver kit like the 64-bit Mako kit or the comprehensive 112-bit Manta driver kit. So act quick, head to our link in the description and use code TQFIX to get your discount today. If your graphics card is old enough, it could be a great addition to a retro PC build. There are a good number of older titles that simply do not run well on newer hardware, even with community mods, meaning a GPU that's old enough could allow you to run these games without the messy compatibility issues as long as you have core components from a similar era. But what if you have a newer card that's no longer supported? Say, something like a GTX 580. If you have a rig to stick it in, you could always do some good for the world and contribute to a distributed computing project like Folding at Home, which conducts disease research by utilizing unused cycles on your PC. And while it can run on CPUs, GPUs generally provide significantly more processing power when it comes to simulating protein folding. Finally, here's a good idea for those of you who are really into music, TV, or films. You can always set up a dedicated home NAS or network attached storage, where all of your media can live and be accessible from anywhere on your home network. While it's obviously true that just streaming media from a paid service is more common these days, owning your media is still quite popular among home theater enthusiasts. And not only does a NAS not need tons of processing power, but it's also a good way to reuse any mechanical hard drives you've got laying around. NASes, of course, can put all that storage use in other cool ways too, such as running a surveillance server, locally hosting smart home functionality if you don't want to rely on commercial cloud service, or de-googling your life if you'd rather have your cloud photos live at your house rather than in a Google server farm, where who knows who's looking at them. Have you ever repurposed your old equipment for a cool project we didn't mention? Let us know down in the comments. And if you're interested in knowing more about selling your old gear, go watch this video next.